Two days ago, I posted a video on the Spring Cloud Kubernetes config example. In that, we saw how to load configs into a Spring Boot application using the Spring Cloud Kubernetes library. In this video, we are going to take a look at how to leverage the discovery service which Kubernetes provides out of the box. We are not going to use any of the libraries like Eureka. We are going to use something called Spring Cloud Kubernetes, which provides a discovery client which is useful for discovering different services inside the Kubernetes cluster. Let's get started. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primus. I'll be using the same example which I have posted in GitHub. This is exactly the same example which we saw in the last video. I have just used the same example. I have checked it out in IntelliJ already. This will be the client side which is going to discover the server side component. If you are starting fresh, I would suggest you to clone this particular repository and then start it from there. Now coming to the same project, we need to modify this to make sure it connects with our Spring Cloud Kubernetes library and get the discovery client example. In order to enable discovery client, we have to add the dependency called Spring Cloud Starter hyphen Kubernetes. So I'll just add the config and then remove it. So this is the library which we need in order to have the Spring Cloud Discovery Client. Now if I go inside this library, this has something called Spring Cloud Kubernetes Discovery. This is a library which is going to do service discovery for our application. And also we have the Kubernetes core library additionally. Coming back to the POM, that's it. So we have the Spring Cloud Starter Kubernetes library 1.1.0 release version. Coming to our application, we need to enable the discovery client. Like any other discovery service, what we do is we need to enable discovery client. If you had seen my Eureka videos, you would have used at enable discovery client or at enable discovery server etc or eureka server you will use enable discovery client because this client side application is going to connect to the server side application using the service discovery and kubernetes as a platform provides this out of the box so we are going to leverage that using spring cloud kubernetes so the first thing is to add the discovery client library the other thing is we need to have the REST template injected because Spring needs to know what it needs to connect to. So we need to inject the REST template. If you don't inject it during auto configuration, what happens is your REST template will not know the URL which you are going to hit. So I'm just creating a new REST template and then doing a return. I'll make it public just to be insect. So what Spring Boot will do is during the startup, this bean gets created. And the same way bean will be injected throughout. So what happens if Spring modifies something to the REST template and if it needs to intercept, it does all those during the startup time. If you don't add this particular statement, when you're using a REST template to connect to your server side component, service discovery will not happen because Spring doesn't know what you're connecting to. In order to make sure Spring knows it, we will have to create it during the startup time. Coming back to our schedule component, we had a schedule component here. I'm going to inject the REST template and use it here. In order to connect our destination service, we are going to use the REST template dot get for entity. I'm just going to use get for entity. We need to pass in the URL. Let's not worry about the URL for now. And also my return type is going to be string. So I'll do, just do a URL and then string. Let's create this local. I have just created a local variable and, and I'll not be populating it yet. Let's create the response for this. This is going to be response entity. And from the response entity, let's get the body, which is going to be the message. So I'll add a output message as well for this. Before this, let's do some system out. So I have added the system out message in the same line calling via discovery client and I have added the body in there itself. So we are all set. Now to populate this URL, we need to know the service name, right? In order to do that, we need to have a server side component. So let's go to the 
start.spring.io and then create it com tech primers kubernetes spring cloud kubernetes server example beneath the uh, dependencies spring web and actuator that's it we don't need anything else just let me generate the project and open it in IntelliJ so the project is open here let me maximize it this is again a vanilla spring boot project so I'm not worried about anything here this is just a server side component so we can create a spring MVC project and then create a rest controller I'm going to call this as users controller let's add some rest controller endpoint uh, request mapping I'll call this as users we need to hit the endpoint called users to retrieve some information I have added it as a string so get users ideally it should be JSON but then I'm just showing it as a string just for the simplicity purpose let's add some users Raju Ram Vijay Ryan Chris so I have different names basically these are different users and I'm just returning this as a string in an endpoint called users nothing fancy here it's just a normal spring boot project I don't have anything else here but however we need to convert this into a kubernetes project because we need to deploy this into our kubernetes environment so I need the docker file let me type the docker file content so this should be having a name let's build this project so that I can get the name So the jars got generated so it's spring cloud kubernetes server example then we need to have scaffold because i'm going to use scaffold to build this particular project so i'll have scaffold.yaml and i'm going to call this as user service it's called user service this is going to be our image name and so here i have defined config.yaml and the deploy.yaml in our case we don't need the config.yaml because we are just going to do the deployment we need to create a deployment and the service in our previous example we saw the config so we don't need it for this particular server set component so let's create the deployment config so in the deployment config I'll remove some stuff which we don't need instead of the config service we are going to call this as users hyphen service so let me replace that with users hyphen service so then all our deployment steps will be ready and we can deploy this and then take a look at it we need to have a different port number so i'll just change the port number so we have a service called user service which is running on node port 30084 we have a deployment which is going to be deployed from the image user service which we will be building via scaffold so if you're new to scaffold and if you're new to this whole ecosystem take a look at my previous videos on what is scaffold what is kubernetes and things like that or else it will be difficult for you to follow up now we are done with the server side component let's deploy this into a kubernetes environment so we have minikube uh, installed as you know so i'm just going to use minikube status let's check if minikube has anything yeah so let me do kubectl get all so we don't have any servers running right now so what i'm going to do is let me do a kubectl get pod i'll apply my configuration so let me do a scaffold build in fact i can do a scaffold run because i am going to build and then deploy so I'll do a scaffold run. This is going to build and deploy into my minikube. So my image is getting built and it is getting deployed here. As you see, it's the container is created and it is just running. Our application will come up when you do kubectl logs. We can do a log check to see if the application is up. Yep, I can see the application already up. Now, how to get the IP address of the application? Usually, if you're using minikube, you can do minikube service and the name of our service is users hyphen service i can do this to get the url and i can directly hit my users endpoint to see the string so i can see my response which is just coming in so the server side component is good and we deployed it inside kubernetes now we need to deploy the 
client side component which is basically the config example where we had the discovery client enabled if you remember we had the url empty we need to have the url added so the name of the services kubectl get all if you if you see the name of the services user hyphen service so this doesn't have to match with your application name but whatever is the service name we need to use that inside our url here so it should be service user hyphen service users hyphen service in our case and we need to use the port 8080 because that's where the service is running on ideally it's using a node port but we are using 8080 because that is the redirected port because we can since we are leveraging the kubernetes native service discovery you don't have to use the node ports port but instead you can directly use the container port the next part is our url which is basically slash users so this should now return us the data if you hit this generally outside you won't be able to access this particular service but inside our application which is the spring cloud kubernetes library you can directly access it using the discovery client if you have this kind of a url and if you have annotated your application with the at enable discovery client along with the discovery client dependency now we can build this and then deploy this particular application as well so let me do a clean build once the build is completed we can do a scaffold run inside this particular project again and then do the deployment in fact i'll do a scaffold dev so that we can see the logs streaming as well the scheduler component is going to run every three seconds so we should be able to pull the server side component every three seconds and see the response coming in from the server so the build is successful let me do a clear i'll do the kubectl get pods so that you can see what's happening and this is going to be this is the project let me do a clear i'll do a scaffold dev so that we can see the logs as well in this window itself so this is going to do a build and deploy so build is completed our docker image got created and it got pushed to our local docker registry and the deployment got completed in the next step and you can see that the application is coming up so now you can see that there are some welcome to tech primers and calling the discovery client message so these are the messages which are coming every three seconds from the server side and this is the client side application which is nothing but the config example so config example is the client side and user service is the server side and this is directly using the server side using this particular url which is users hyphen service 8080 so we are not using any url something like this which is specific to the cluster and within the cluster so spring cloud kubernetes is leveraging the native kubernetes construct to get this particular access to the server side i'll just summarize what we did so we had a config client example which we did as a part of the last video which is the client side you can create a dummy example as well in that we need to add the dependency for the discovery client library which is spring cloud starter kubernetes i am using 1.1.0 once that is done we need to go to the auto discovery and add the at enable discovery client also we are injecting the rest template so that spring can modify it and use the service discovery framework then we are going to the scheduler component and adding the url and then getting the responses every three seconds we parallelly create a server side component which is just a vanilla spring boot application with spring mvc i have created a rest endpoint called users i am just returning some string message that's it and i had used scaffold to build this into a docker file i have created a docker file as well and then i have a deploy.yaml to deploy this inside kubernetes once this is deployed we will be able to access the application using this service name and the port of the container from the client side application which is this here so we are accessing it using user service colon 8080 slash users and we will be able to directly use it inside spring cloud if you're not using spring cloud kubernetes you will still be able to leverage the service name then the cluster name and then the service dot local variable to access your server side component using the kubernetes native discovery but if you are using spring boot application it is easy when you use spring cloud kubernetes library as always this code also will be available in the github repository you can take a look at it and then try it out in your minikube or in any kubernetes cluster in the next video we will take a look at what are kubernetes secrets and how we can store certificates inside kubernetes secrets and then leverage that inside the application during runtime
if you have any specific use case which you want me to take a stab do let me know i'll try it out as well as always if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video thank you very much